and many believe the apocalypse will be signaled by these. I had never seen birds falling from the sky. I saw them bounce off my mailbox. That's when I shined the flashlight down. It looked like leaves. There were so many birds on the ground. After a deadly New Year's Eve in Arkansas, this case has been elevated to legal status. A seeming wave of animal deaths sweeps the globe. Are these events somehow connected? God is sending a message. This Bible Belt town of the light of New Year's Day reveals that red-winged blackbirds had fallen from the sky. Thousands of carcasses are scattered over one and a half square miles of BB. It is a deeply unsettling spectacle. It's just hard to believe that there were that many birds dead, you know, laying everywhere. I'd rank it up there probably as one of the strangest things that I'd ever dealt with. I was worried about what the residents were going to think and that were they going to panic. And are people somehow in danger? People were nervous when they saw the, the gentleman in the hazmat uniforms out. We were a little leery about picking them up because what if something was wrong with them? Now all of that ran through everybody's mind that was there looking at them. You know, wh where did it come from and why did this happen? Compounding the mystery are other animal deaths. The day before the blackbirds perished, 80,000 drumfish washed up on the Arkansas River, only 125 miles from BB. A few days into the new year, more bodies appear. It's birds again. In the neighboring state of Louisiana, hundreds of them litter a highway. A single big die-off of animals makes for good local gossip. Two close together on the map and in the calendar raise eyebrows in the region. But three? Now the fish and the birds hit the fan. Forget looking up. If you're looking for birds, just look down. It really is like something out of a horror film. People may think the deaths are related. Yeah, it is freaky. I don't know what's going on, but that's weird. Dead everywhere. Maybe they're just not telling us the truth. The truth, for certain bloggers, is that the dead creatures are a harbinger of the apocalypse. A flock of these birds got a direct blast of the chemtrails. But for others, the truth would be a grand unified theory, a mechanism that would connect the different deaths. And so some point to toxins in the clouds from the BP oil spill. Others focus on so-called chemtrails, Jet exhaust claimed to be laced with experimental poisons. Yet others look to the North Magnetic Pole. Perhaps fluctuations in the Earth's electromagnetic field is what's beginning to show up in the behavior of these animals. Agnew suspects that not only are today's creature die-offs a sign of worse to come, coupled with the sun's ability to put off large coronal mass ejections, would pull that energy, that solar flare, as it were, over the Earth and end life as we know it on this planet. Another theory of animal deaths involves a government conspiracy. A military research installation in Alaska called HARP blasts radio waves into the sky to study the upper atmosphere. Any other government installation we go tour, of course you can come in, you can see it in operation, you can film anything you want, you can sit in the chair, watch the screens, but not at HARP. When HARP is turned on, there's often a telltale lavender fluorescence to the upper atmosphere. Few scientists subscribe to this theory, but for Agnew, its significance is profound. This lavender sky has shown up minutes or sometimes hours before some of the most devastating quakes in the last half decade. 
This is a coincidence? Maybe. But of course, some conspiracies are well established. These starlings in Yankton, South Dakota, are in fact victims of a little known government program. Some people refer to it as culling, some people refer to it as removal, some people refer to it as harvesting. In all cases, the animal dies. Starlings and red-winged blackbirds cause more crop damage than any other birds in the U.S. With their livelihoods at stake, growers banded together. Back in the 1960s, there was a group of farmers in Ohio who got together and formed a committee called the Bye Bye Blackbird Committee. Goaded by this committee, the U.S. government joined the fight. Most federal weapons are non-lethal, such as noisemakers. But when gentler methods fail, the war can escalate. Several million birds are killed by the USDA every year. And among them are the starlings found in South Dakota. These birds have been fouling cattle feed. Were the BB blackbirds also government targets? There was no government program underway in that area to manage blackbirds in any way. Uh, whatever caused this death, it had nothing to do with the government. Nature will begin to fall apart. In the case of Hosea 4, verse 3, he says, birds shall fall from the sky, fish shall die, beasts of the land shall faint. God will continue to get more intense in his warning. As if on cue, two million fish wash ashore in Chesapeake Bay. More blackbirds die, this time in Kentucky. Two weeks later in the Midwest, some 200 cows meet their maker. As the wave of animal misfortune continue to investigate the thousands of creatures that died on New Year's Eve. And once again, it's a legal case. A legal case because many birds are protected by federal law. Kill a blackbird, go to jail. And some of the possible killers might be dangerous in the extreme. One of the first things we have to consider is the potential for a terrorist act. Because we don't know if terrorists have accidentally or purposely used wild animals to test their system. So we have to look carefully at these birds with that in mind. Poisons. Infectious diseases. That's enormous power that can lift anything. And so birds can, can be lifted and fall somewhere else. The same phenomenon might explain other historical reports. We have, for example, worms, toads and frogs, salamander, and even fish, snakes. So there's a whole zoo that came down from the sky. As Mulliker contemplates the archival record, today's seeming wave of deaths appears to be spreading around the globe. In Brazil, a hundred tons of fish turn up near the shore. In Romania, starlings perish in the snow. And in New Zealand, snapper wash up on a beach, some bizarrely missing their eyes. Could these deaths somehow share the same cause? What makes a pattern of events suspicious? Are the animal die-offs mere coincidences? Is the common intuition that they are linked just an illusion? While that question remains open for the moment, the variety of carcasses keeps increasing. Crabs bereft of life litter a British shore. 
Over a hundred pilot whales strand themselves in New Zealand. Harp seals wash up on Labrador beaches. For Christian columnist Brad McDonald, each new die-off is further evidence of God's intent. He is trying to communicate to us through this pattern. These events do signal worse times ahead for mankind. BB blackbirds also be responsible for some of the other animal deaths around the globe. The wide nets cast by some investigators are coming up empty. When flocks of birds fall from the sky, when schools of fish wash up dead on the beaches, all these events should arouse questions in the minds of men. Questions do indeed arise. For McDonald, they are about God and morality. Challenges, upheaval, and conflict. That's why the NATO Alliance is evolving to meet the future challenges of tomorrow. In his closing remarks yesterday, the secretary told reporters the U.S. remains committed to its NATO allies and European security. From Kandahar to Kiev, 20 years ago, None of us could have foreseen the ways in which NATO now contributes to global security. With the strong support of the United States, NATO has been and must continue to be a force for peace, prosperity, and freedom, not only in Europe, but around the world. Last week, the head of the country's central bank floated the idea of dumping the greenback as the world's reserve currency, replacing it with an international you believe deeply in, and we believe just as deeply in our system. It is not our common beliefs that have brought us together here, but our common interests and our common hopes. The interest that each of us has to maintain our independence and the security of our peoples. And the hope that each of us has to build a new world order in which nations and peoples with different systems and different values can live together in peace respecting one another while disagreeing with one another, letting history rather than the battlefield be the judge of their different ideas. Thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. His vision for America's place in a new world order. Returning vets could be a risk to our nation. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order. That... I think the new world order is emerging. This is a hoax and a scam which is designed to transfer wealth and power from the private sector to the government sector and from the government of the United States to a world government. And those people who have been yelling, oh, the UN's going to take over global conspiracy government, theorists, they concern, they've been crazy, but now they must, they're right. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. Tell us who they are. No. You know, financial terrorism. They have the ability to tweak the knob. I am proposing that the Federal Reserve be granted new authority. The ultimate goal of the carbon tax and the cap and trade is to destroy production. This energy tax is the largest tax increase in American history. We're actually creating a global warming police. So number one, they can come in, the federal government can come in, inspect your house, and send you the bill. We're setting up a global warming Gestapo. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for, is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. I and fierce. And I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. The president. Well, another day, another standoff. Behind me is the Ukrainian warship, the Slavutich. 
It's been blockaded by Russian forces. Uh, to my right are some Russian Marines who are keeping an eye on things. Laura, I understand you're on embankment um, on the river, just steps away from the, where the protests are now. Earlier we saw you in the heart of London. The protests have marched towards uh, Westminster and the Houses of Parliament. Tell me, what, what do you see there at the moment? Well, you're right, Rory. I'm about 300 metres away from the main protest. Uh, you might be able to see remnants of it just behind me here. Uh, the, the main protest is taking place right in front of the Houses of Parliament where, Parliament, where police have cordoned the protesters into an area. It's a little bit scrappy there at the moment. There's a, a s sort of small outbreaks of violence, protesters trying to break away from the main group. And the police, for, the large part, for the, a large part, letting them. They're also making their way up uh, just over here towards Trafalgar Square. Uh, let's take you overseas now to Greece, where workers have taken over the streets of Athens today. That's tear gas you see there, protesters clashing with police. Some in the crowd threw Molotov cocktails and police responded. The hostile scene sent some Christmas shoppers running for cover. Now, demonstrators are furious over the Greek government's austerity measures. And our Anne McMillan is watching the story. She's watching it from London, but has more detail on the protests. And Anne, those are our latest pictures. What's the latest information from Athens this morning? Heather, around 15,000 people are on the streets of Athens this morning or this afternoon. Uh, police are using tear gas against demonstrators throwing Molotov cocktails and starting fires outside Greek Parliament. Um, there are reports of a former cabinet minister being attacked by a mob who uh, hit him in the face. The U.S. is setting up an international coalition aimed at supporting rebels in their struggle. The so-called Friends of Democratic Syria will involve countries willing to prop up the opposition and pile more pressure on the regime. Direct military action is ruled out, but reports suggest that British and Qatari special forces are already in the conflict zone. And while the U.S. and its allies criticize Russia for supplying military hardware to Damascus, there are now calls from American lawmakers to arm the opposition. About his Marina Port Nile reports, the region's already being flooded with firepower made in the USA. At the United Nations Security Council, America holds one permanent seat. But when it comes to weapons, the world's largest arms exporter is often seen as sitting on two chairs. They say there isn't an international embargo uh, on arms preventing them from doing that. That is a fact. But that doesn't change the immorality of supplying a dictatorial regime that is killing its people in massive numbers every day. Uh, and, and we are, are, are deeply concerned about as U.S. officials continue publicly scolding countries over relations with Syria, critics say the accusations are being thrown from a tremendous glass house. The U.S. is hugely hypocritical in this regard because they've long been the largest arms dealer and uh, most of those weapons that the U.S. has sold historically, uh, more than $400 billion worth since the uh, 1960s, have gone to the Middle East and you can't argue uh, seriously that it's made that region any more stable. In the past few years, nearly 50 percent of U.S. weapons exports have been flowing to the Middle East. Many countries with the biggest appetite for American weapons have also made headlines for carrying out brutal crackdowns against dissidents and opposition groups. If you're our thug, you're okay, and if it's their thug, you're not. I mean, this is, for all of us who have been overseas, the duplicity and hypocrisy of American foreign policy is painfully uh, evident. According to congressional figures, America has sold $1.4 billion worth of weapons to Bahrain since 2000. And America struck its single biggest arms deal when Saudi Arabia ordered $60 billion worth of arms. The U.S. has long subsidized the Israeli military and recently supplied them with bunker buster bombs. Experts say this strategic arming of Middle Eastern countries is aimed at Iran and extending U.S. dominance in the region. The deal uh, that is going on right now is a massive build-up against Iran. It's not at all about, you know, human rights issues, and, and uh, it's, it's all about some uh, geopolitical gain.
So also developing tonight, the U.S. is beefing up our military presence in mainland Europe. We have learned that the U.S. is sending in more fighter jets like these at the request of our allies tonight. Earlier, our own Shepard Smith traveled into the disputed territory, into the heart of this international crisis, and he joins us now live from Ukraine, from Kiev, Ukraine. Went to a naval institution and found Russian soldiers had taken charge of it. Uh, they had not allowed the Ukrainian soldiers to leave. They had taken their arms away. That's the same spot where a U.N. diplomat today was harassed by a mob, ended up hiding out in a coffee shop for a while before ending his diplomatic trip here early. The fact of the matter is the Russians control all of the ports, all of the naval installations. Ukrainian uh, war, uh, ships are blocked into their own port by the Russians, and the BBC even got video of Russian snipers in a tower watching over that area. So the truth is the Russians control Crimea. But certainly people here in Ukraine are wondering, especially in Kiev, which is more aligned with the West and with Europe, when does this end? Right behind me, the flowers that you see, that's the spot where the local police set up a wall. Police snipers got on top and killed a number of the protesters who were here. The hotel where we're staying at the time served as a morgue. Police state that's what many protesters here in Toronto, where the G20 summit of economic leaders is taking place, have called it a billion dollars spent on security, 20,000 officers deployed, officers who left this car after it was attacked by protesters who have since written on it police state, which is what many have characterized it. Out here on the streets of Toronto, protests have been going on all day. They've really been going on all week, but they've culminated today, which is when the actual G20 summit began. Now, many of these protesters were peacefully marching, rallying for various causes that they believe are not being heard by the leaders who are meeting here in Toronto. Many are still surrounding me, although the actual protest uh, ended officially a while while ago ended by riot police these protesters wanted to get down to the five kilometer long fence that's 12 feet high in order to bring their messages to these economic leaders they did not make it there they were stopped blocks away by riot police now behind me this is another one of the cars that uh, protesters wearing all black according to witnesses attacked and it was surrounded by riot police who eventually backed off and gave it up and the car has been taken over by protesters some that were speaking to me said hey we paid for it it's ours now it's the least we can do after it's the least we get after all of this taxpayer money has been spent on this summit that we didn't want here well take a look at the pictures there wow. rosemary again uh you're watching it they're coming in that is uh, unbelievable look at that that is arriving on the coast. As you're watching these uh, dramatic pictures there from uh, Japan, the earthquake occurring about 150 kilometers east of Sendai, I do want to mention that Japan is not the only uh, uh, place that is being affected here, but my goodness, uh, it is now taking the brunt of it there, uh, Rosemary. That is uh, unbelievable. Extraordinary. I mean, you can see the power lines going down as all of that water roars through and rips. And of course, it is close to the coast. You can see the ships and the boats that are already in the harbour there, but all of the cars are being drawn into that. I mean, this is just extraordinary seeing these pictures as this uh, unfolds before our very eyes. We've never, we've never seen this. We're watching a live tsunami hit Japan. If you're watching us uh, from around the world here on CNN, that is what you're watching. Those are not taped pictures. That is a live picture of what appears to be a major tsunami arriving uh, along the Japanese coast. Just uh, incredible scenes there. And of course, Ivan, let's talk about those waves because you were, you were saying like 500 miles for our U.S. audience, uh, 800 kilometers per hour for our global audience. I mean, it, just extraordinary strength involved in Fox News alert on the world food supplies. We have been tracking this story for a few days now and it is getting quite some attention. Food supplies getting very tight and on the commodity markets food prices soaring to levels never before seen.
Good evening, everyone. As you join us, medical volunteers across South Florida are making urgent plans to get to Haiti, where a cholera outbreak is continuing to claim more victims. It's a fast-moving and dangerous strain of the disease that hasn't been seen in Haiti for more than half a century. As of tonight, at least 250 people are known to have died, and more than 3,000 others have been sickened. The Haitian government fears many more will become infected and die as the epidemic moves even closer to the quake ravaged capital of Port au Prince. News Channel 5's Liz Nunez spoke with one volunteer who's in Haiti pleading for help. Now, South Korea is under fire for the handling of its worst ever outbreak of foot and mouth disease. Critics say the authorities were too slow to react and that their response to the problem is inhumane. The South Korean government says that it will cost about $1.4 billion to get things back to normal. That figure takes into account vaccinations, culling, and the compensation of farmers there. Israel has intercepted uh, an Iranian arms shipment to the terrorists in Gaza. This uh, ship contains uh, dozens of uh, lethal long-range missiles, high explosives that could uh, rain death and destruction on Israel's civilians and on our cities. Uh, I think what this uh, reveals is the true face of Iran. Iran is uh, smiling, talking soft in the international forums, but it continues unabatedly its aggressive behavior in the Middle East and beyond. It's sending the deadliest weapons to the most cruel terrorist groups at despots like the Assad regime. Uh, it has not changed one iota its aggressive policies. I think it's critically important to prevent this terrorist regime from having the weapons of mass death. This regime must not be allowed to have nuclear weapons capability.